Thank you, Mr. President. My country, Syria, has recently, be it solely or in cooperation with several other member states of the United Nations, sent a number of official letters and appeals to both the Secretary General and successive presidents of the Security Council, demanding to put an end to the economic, commercial, financial, and health terrorism represented by unilateral coercive measures imposed by some member states of this organization on the Syrian people, as well as on other friendly peoples. Our calls were positively received by the Secretary General of the United Nations, several senior officials of the organization, including the Special Envoy to Syria, Geyer Peterson, the Special Rapporteur on the Effects of Unilateral Coercive Measures on Human Rights, the Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, WHO, and others. All these senior officials, together with 40 international and UN organizations, have demanded to put an end to the measures imposed on around 2 billion people in the affected countries. So this is not a joke. We are talking about the fate of 2 billion people almost one-third of the humanity. On the other hand, the American administration and its allies persisted to violate the international law, the United Nations Charter, and the human rights instruments. During the last two months, they deliberately spared no efforts in an attempt to thwart any initiative or draft resolution demanding to put an end to the negative impacts of unilateral coercive measures on the health and services sectors in affected countries fighting COVID-19 pandemic. Needless to enumerate the dozens of draft resolutions submitted to the General Assembly lately speaking. This was not all. The American administration announced an extension for the unilateral coercive measures imposed on the Syrian people in wanton disregard of international law. The United Nations Charter and resolutions, in addition to all appeals, including the aforementioned, to put an end to these measures. The stance of the American administration manifests a new step in its policies hostile to my country and refutes any humanitarian allegations promoted by the representatives of this administration and its allies, whether inside or outside the United Nations. Mr. President, over the past years, I have repeatedly briefed your Council on the catastrophic impacts of the coercive measures on the daily lives of 24 million Syrians and how these measures hinder the state institutions and health economic and service sectors in Syria from appropriately fulfilling their duties. COVID-19 pandemic has increased the magnitude of workload and the challenges created by these measures. Once again, it highlighted the false humanitarian allegations promoted by some Western governments that recently refused to even allow Syrian airplanes to repatriate Syrian nationals stranded in some European countries. The clarifications recently issued by the European Commission about coercive measures demonstrate once again what we have always said, that these measures only harm people. We therefore stress the fact that these governments do not intend to lift these measures which lack any acceptable moral, economic, or political base. The unilateral sanctions imposed by the European Union and the United States cannot be justified because they are illegal by nature and by definition and are an attempt to circumvent the legitimacy of the Security Council and aim at undermining the sovereignty of the Syrian state. 
As a matter of fact, all that is being promoted by the Western governments that impose coercive measures on my country is nothing but a new desperate attempt to humanize, humanize their vicious behavior and the economic terrorism and collective punishment practiced by them against the Syrians living in areas under government control. We assure you here that the prospects for Europeans and American humanitarian and medical supplies to Syria are at zero limits due to the imposition of a wide package of restrictions and preconditions for these supplies. However, we will not be deceived by any allegations made by these countries and we will not give in to their dictates in any way. In this context, my delegation reiterates its demand to the Security Council to immediately mandate the Secretary General to submit to the Council within 30 days a comprehensive report on the dis disastrous impacts of unilateral coercive measures on the Syrian people. This is an essential part of our understanding of humanitarian concerns and the impartial, objective, and professional role of the United Nations in humanitarian work, international cooperation in fighting COVID-19 pandemic, the principle of leaving no one behind, and other important principles that form the parameters of the United Nations work. Mr. President, my government reaffirms its position regarding Brussels conferences and stresses the fact that these conferences are nothing but propaganda show, show aiming at the implementation of the agendas of some hostile countries that organize and sponsor these conferences in a flagrant politicization of humanitarian work and the imposition of their preconditions and deep-rooted obstinacy. My government therefore reiterates that it does not recognize any initiative or meetings held about Syria without its participation and the full coordination with its government. My government also renews its demand that the United Nations do not participate in such conferences in order to maintain its impartial role and respect of humanitarian work parameters under Resolution 46-182. Mr. President, the Turkish occupation forces in northwestern Syria, along with the American occupation forces in northeast and in Al Tanf area, where Al Rukban camp is located, continue to support terrorist organizations and their proxy separatist militias. This is a fact that has been confirmed by the confessions of a number of ISIS terrorists who had recently been captured by the Syrian Arab army and who confirmed that they had been trained by the terrorist Maghawir al thawra group under the supervision of the American occupation forces in al Tanf. Such behavior has been faced with the absolute silence of this council which some of its permanent members are seeking to render a platform for NATO and an umbrella for the defense of their allies in it, turning a blind eye to their violations of international law and the principles and purposes of the United Nations. In light of the sponsorship and investment in terrorist organizations, Al-Nusra Front and its partner terrorist groups have recognized their forces have reorganized their forces in their areas of presence in northwestern Syria to launch further terrorist attacks, such as has been witnessed a few days ago when Hurras ad din and the Turkestan Islamic Party, or moderate terrorists as some would like to describe, have reorganized themselves and launched an attack on one of the Syrian army military points in the village of Tanjara adjacent to Al Ghab region in the northwest. This attack led to a number of martyrs and the wounding of many other soldiers. Moreover, terrorists of the Turkish-backed Turkistan Islamic Party destroyed the tower of the Zaizun power plant in Idlib countryside, 
which alone is worth about $44 million. After they had looted, in cooperation with Turkish technicians, the plant's equipment, which is estimated to be worth $660 million, and transported it into Turkish territory through crossings controlled by the terrorist organizations and their Turkish sponsors, and claimed by OCHA as humanitarian crossings. Add to all this, of course, the crimes committed by Hayat Tahrir Sham, the latest of which is drilling to extract metal pipes, copper cables, and, and landline wires in order to be sold in the Turkish market. The Turkish regime also continues to use water as a weapon against Syrian civilians in the city of Al Hasaka and its surrounding communities, cutting off water from Al Luk station and depriving one million Syrians of drinking water, which is a prescribed crime of war and a documented crime against humanity that calls for urgent meetings of this council to put an end to them and hold war criminals and the Turkish regime accountable instead of covering up for these crimes and holding numerous urgent sessions on fabricated and artificial issues. Today, the Turkish regime is again violating its obligations under international law and the agreements governing international water and rivers by constructing the Alisu Dam on the course of the Tigris River and starting to fill the artificial lake of the dam, which will deprive millions of Syrians and Iraqis for years of benefiting from the water of the Tigris. Furthermore, the US occupation forces have prevented the Syrian Arab Red Crescent from working in Northeast Syria and have sought to replace it with illegal organizations that are not recognized by the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. On the other hand, the Turkish regime sought to bring the Turkish Red Crescent to work in the areas it occupies in the north and northwest of Syria and prevent the Syrian Arab Red Crescent Society from working there as well as attacking its offices, looting its content and, atta and attacking its workers as Israel, the occupying power, has done since its occupation of the Syrian Golan in 1967. Thus, the Israeli occupation and the Turkish occupation are similar in their violation of the decisions of the founding conference of the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. What is worse is that the Turkish regime has pitted its affiliated terrorist groups against the Syrian Red Crescent and urged them to prevent humanitarian access from within Syrian territory, to find a pretext for extending cross-border activities. This is a common practice that we and our partners in humanitarian work have previously seen in a number of areas, including the eastern and southern regions, with the aim of giving pretext for extending cross-border activities and facilitating the smuggling of, of arms equipment and supplies to terrorist organizations. Accordingly, my country reaff reaffirms its position of the rejection of cross-border activities and again demands the closure of the OCHA office in Ghazi Antar, which is a Turkish city, which has made itself an instrument of anti-Syrian governments and armed terrorist groups, a mouthpiece of lies and a platform of mislead the Security Council and world public opinion. My country emphasizes that any improvement in the humanitarian situation requires full cooperation and coordination with the Syrian government. Seizing the politicization of humanitarian action and that the hostile governments should refrain from their policies that are based on the imposition of coercive measures, preconditions, and obstacles they impose on humanitarian and developmental assistance. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Aina.